My name is Juan Francisco, and I'm a psychic medium and tarot card reader. I've always been curious about the supernatural, the paranormal, and psychic abilities, and I'm here to share my stories and interview folks who want to share their own stories with us. Let's get to it. Hello, everybody. I want to start off with an exciting announcement first, because this episode's going to get real and raw. And before we get real and raw, I want to share something that's exciting. Not that the real and raw isn't positive or it's totally negative, because it's not. It's all good things. The title of this episode is Ready, Set, Grow. So all good things. But let's start with the lighthearted first. So I'm excited to announce that beginning this spring... I will be doing in-person readings at the Earth Angel Crystal Shop and Healing Center here in New York City. I've never done readings in person at a shop before. And actually, when I've done an in-person reading, it was for a friend in person. I've never done in-person readings for clients. So this is a huge, if I may say so myself, a huge debut for me. I'm so excited. So again, this spring, I'm going to start doing in-person readings on Saturdays at Earth Angel Crystal, which is in the Long Island City neighborhood of New York City. It's one stop away from Grand Central Station, one stop away from Manhattan on the 7 train. And I will let you know the date that I start doing that when I can announce it, but it will be this coming spring. So be on the lookout for an announcement for me on Instagram, here on the podcast. If you are in the New York City area or if you are traveling to New York City this year, you know you can get a you can get a reading with me on a Saturday if you happen to be here on a Saturday. So more to come on that. But I wanted to share that because I'm so excited. As most of you know, or many of you know if you've listened to this podcast before, Daisy at Earth Angel Crystal is my spiritual mentor. I've worked with her in mentorship before. We are, we are currently not in session as mentor-mentee, but I've worked with her as a mentor. And she has been a huge part of my journey, a huge part of me getting to where I am today as a person, but also just as a medium. And uh, that combined with other things in my life that have helped me and have helped me grow, which will lead me segue us into the topic of this podcast in just a bit. She is one part of many important things in my life this past year that has helped me grow into my own and continue to want to develop myself not only as a medium but as a person. And I'm so excited I get to debut my in-person reading business at her shop. So excited. All right. This episode is going to be focusing on growth. It's going to be an update on my life thus far. I've been a little MIA here and there with the podcast on Instagram and social media, and I wanted to share why, and some of you may know why, based on what I've posted in my Instagram stories. But I wanted to delve a little deep into it because I think just so many things happened in the past month that have brought me to question a lot and to to grieve. And I wanted to share these things, not just for myself, because it feels good to share about them with other people. And I mean that in the least self-centered way possible. I really mean that it's cathartic for me to talk this out, which is why I have a podcast. (laughs) A podcast is very cathartic for me, whether I'm talking about myself or talking about something outside of myself, like just the topic of the paranormal, the supernatural, psychic abilities, or talking to somebody else and interviewing them. I find all of it very cathartic. And you, if you've listened to my podcast before, you know me very well to the point that you know that I love to share about my life and myself because I hope that somehow folks listening can relate to it. And also so that I can be relatable because I'm a human being just as much as I am. Well, actually, they're not exclusive from each other. I'm a human being and a medium. I'm a human being who is a practicing medium. I'm still a human being and I still struggle and I still question things. So it was about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. I don't know. Time is bending. But maybe two weeks ago that on a Monday, I had a brief text exchange with the person who is now my ex. And I published a podcast episode, a couple podcast episodes back about going through my recent breakup. And that brief 
exchange really drove home the fact that this person is done. They are done. And I think I needed to read that to see that to help me move forward because I fully understood that they are done. And so I was feeling the pain from reading that exchange that we had. That same night, I receive a text message from a random number saying they are like, hi, uh, how are you? I am, and I'm not going not to mention their name out of respect for them and their family. I am Blink's mom. And I'm like, who is, who is this person? What do I remember this person, this person's name? And <clears throat> I thought it was a scammer that was texting me. And I started copying an attitude. But then I realized, oh, wait, I did know somebody by that name. And this person was somebody that I had talked to for maybe five, six months. And we were very supportive with each other. And we just lost contact after that. I think we lost contact in 2020, late 2022, maybe. And we just lost contact. And I had always wondered what what had happened with him and how he was doing. And I actually texted him a couple times, but then he didn't answer. So I say to this person, yes, I did know him. Is he well? And she told me, well, he passed away a year ago from a heart attack. And this person was in his early 20s. So young. And I just thought like, oh my goodness, this is insane. And and I quickly understood also that... um. I understood that this person, this woman was looking through her son's phone and reading text exchanges and saw that he and I had been texting and that we had become friends. And she thanked me for being his friend. And I just told her, you know, thank you for raising a wonderful young man. And it just, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. So, and to get, to feel the pain that I was feeling from the morning time and this exchange with my ex to experiencing this other text exchange with this person who lost their son and she's thanking me for being his friend I just I just wanted to I I told her I'm sending you so much light and so much love and I'm sending you a big hug and and I know there's nothing I can say to to help right now but I'm just I send you lots of love it was it was a lot in one day and I'm not trying to diminish her struggle because she's someone who lost her son I'm just somebody who had a breakup and is hearing this news. My struggle is in no comparison to hers. And I was definitely feeling that night, like what is going on today from one thing to the next. And I just briefly want to say that, oh, (laughs) you know, I can feel his soul coming. Wow. (sighs) Oh, Well, you're hearing it, watching it in real time, folks, but I'm feeling his soul, the soul of this young man who passed and feeling him around me. Um, And I just want to say, I just want to say um, in honor of him to take care of yourself, to take care of your health and to be attentive to how your body feels, how you feel in your body. It's important. And I want to thank him for his presence. Okay, that same night, another, well, this person was, I was closer to this person. We weren't close, close, but we were in communication with each other often. I learned that a friend of mine passed that same night, but I didn't learn about it until two days later. And this person was somebody that I met amongst my social circles and he and I did some shows together and we weren't best friends, but we had a close bond. There was something that was close about our bond, even though we didn't talk all the time. uh, I can't say I knew everything about him or the most intimate details about who he was in the physical world, but there was definitely an affinity between us. At least I had that affinity for him. And when I learned on Wednesday, two days later, that he had passed Monday night, the same day that all these other things happened, 
I kind of lost it. I literally said out loud by myself in my studio as I was crying. I said, what the fuck? What the fuck? I was so angry. I was more confused than I was angry. Very confused. But then the anger happened and it was a lot. And I couldn't believe it. And he unfortunately passed in a very tragic accident. So it was not something that was, it was very unexpected. And the way he passed was tragic. And it just, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. And that Saturday, I went to his memorial service. And he, he's the reason I found my second home in New York City. In 2018, I and my doggy Sella, who you you probably heard her walking around and shaking her fur <laughs> next to me in this episode already, she and I needed a place to live. I had three roommates and none of them were signing, re-signing the lease that we all had together. And that means they were that meant they were all moving out and I needed to find a place to live because I couldn't afford that apartment by myself. I had two or three weeks to look for a new place. And when I talked to him about it, I mentioned it to my social group that we were both a part of. He said, well, look into my building. And he connected me with his landlord. And because this person, this this friend, owned businesses in this building, he was in good standing with the landlord. And the landlord said, well, if you know him, then you're fine by me. And so I got into the building and I lived in that building until 2020. And I didn't really see him very much, this friend, but... We we would run into each other and uh, fast forward to maybe one or two years ago, he opens a fitness studio where this old yoga studio used to be in that building. And I used to go to, I went to one yoga class at this space. And so his memorial service, fast forward to two weeks ago, his memorial service was held in his fitness studio. And it was weird to be number one in my old residential building, knowing that he was no longer in the physical world. Number two, stepping into this fitness studio where I had done a yoga class. Oh, in that room over there. It was just very surreal, very weird. And when I was two blocks away from the building, I was walking with other folks who were going to attend the memorial. I felt nervous to go in. I almost didn't want to go in. I was scared. Not frightened, not that intense, but I felt scared. I felt nervous. It's like, it's almost like when you're about to go on a roller coaster and, you know, not taking into account how much someone may enjoy a roller coaster. But like when you're afraid of going on a roller coaster and you're like, nope, nope, I don't want to go. Nope. I don't, and you're in line. You don't want to go in. Nope. I don't want to go. That's how I felt. I felt like, I don't know if I want to do this, but I told myself I need to do this for myself and I want to honor him. Most important, more important than me doing anything for myself, I want to honor him. And I'm so glad that I stepped in. I was in there for two, three hours and it was, it was hard. It was surreal. It was very bizarre to see a video reel of his photos and his videos of this man that no longer existed in the physical world, whom I had just texted two weeks prior, catching up with him very briefly. And It was great to catch up with people in the room that were there. So two weeks ago, it was a very, very tough week. And I'm still, I'm still processing. I thought I was okay with my emotions, but as I'm sitting here talking to you listeners, I'm almost speechless. And you could probably see it in my face if you're watching this on YouTube. Emotions are coming up for me. And... I think I'm still processing the shock, processing what it was like to hear that news about him. And the way I heard about it was very, it it was, no one told me, hey, so-and-so passed. Someone had described to me, yeah, you know, I heard about the passing of somebody and I was going to partner with him at his fitness studio uptown. I'm like, wait, huh? What? 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 And that's how I found out. I just, yeah. 
You know what's interesting that I just realized? The person that I had the breakup with, the young man who passed, whose mother had reached out to me, and this person, this friend of mine who passed, they all had names with the letter J. Just find that very interesting. I don't think there's any anything existential to that. I don't know, but I just find it very, very interesting. Three J's. So what has this all taught me? Look, I, I think I've said this before on this podcast. I am a person of faith. I don't have unshakable faith. I doubt sometimes. I question things. Sometimes my human brain just doesn't understand the things that happen in this world, in this lifetime, and I get angry. I feel like the way I feel today, Juan feels today, when I get to those pearly gates, when I see God one day, I'm going to be so happy to be there. And I have a lot of questions to ask God. A lot of questions. Questions regarding, you know, why do these things happen to people? Why does a child get so sick like that? Why does someone like this just pass out of nowhere? And I do believe that everything happens for a reason and that our souls are eternal. And so the death of the physical body doesn't mean very much to the soul because the soul lives forever. But of course, my human side just thinks, well, how about this mother who is here left grieving? How about... This family who is here left grieving about their son who passed so tragically. And I don't understand everything right now about what it is to be human and experience death like this around me. But even more so for people who are closely and directly related to these people, for them to experience that. I don't know what, I don't have the answers to these questions and Yeah, I think I just want to share my human side with you today and say that there are things that happen in this lifetime that I just don't understand. And even though I believe everything happens for a reason, I really do believe that. It still doesn't keep me from asking, God, why would this happen? Something I also know is tragedies like this are nothing new to the human, nothing new to humanity. For as long as humans have been around, tragic deaths have occurred. And I think, as this is going to sound very weird to say out loud, and I'm going to acknowledge that first. There's some comfort I find in that, knowing that I am not the first human to experience grief. I am not the first human to hear the news of someone tragically passing. That the families of these two young of these two men uh they are not the first to experience the sudden loss of someone they love does it make it easier does it make my questions go away but i guess this is what it means to be human for some of us and i want to say that i say that with the most delicate i'm trying to be delicate and i want to be compassionate and empathetic because I don't think that the right thing to do is to spiritually bypass and say oh they're just meant to go through that for their soul growth or oh um everything happens for a reason so it's okay like yes everything happens for a reason yes things happen for our soul growth which I'll get to in a minute regarding my own growth But that doesn't take away the grief that someone feels. It doesn't remove for somebody the pain of experiencing that. And we need to honor that because maybe through honoring and experiencing that pain and letting someone, letting ourselves or letting someone else experience it as they need to, as they want to, will help them discover something about themselves. And who am I to tell them they need that or don't need that? You know what I mean? Lots of thoughts and musings I have today. So what has this done for me in the past couple weeks? I'll tell you that these things happening in succession like that from each each other, it's given me time to think. And 
to consider what's really, really important. It's made me think about what do I want to do with my time? What do I want to do with my creative energy? And it may sound cliche, but the idea, the fact that, you know, life feels short sometimes. What am I doing? How am I spending my energy and my time? And I think what's been looming large for me in the last couple of weeks is asking myself, what is healthy for me? What boundaries can I set with people with myself sometimes or with the with commitments I have? What boundaries can I set that will protect my energy, keep me safe, and in different in many respects, in, in the many definitions of what the word safe could mean? What what are what are ways to protect myself to set boundaries? For example, and I think that there are several people out there who are thinking about this topic, social media and posting. The past couple weeks, I have not been posting as much because I've been bogged down by this, all this news and just feeling distracted. Same thing with the podcast. There was one week or two weeks, not back to back, maybe one week this week and then another week, two weeks from then. I did not post a podcast episode and I, all of these things happened because I felt so distracted and I felt like my energy was just, and I have to also admit that I've been spending time with things that maybe don't deserve all that time. And it's made me reassess just what am I devoting my time to? And is it worth my time? And it's not to say I'm going to cut things out of my life, but maybe that thing could use a little bit less time and I could be devoting that energy and time towards the podcast, towards my business, towards what I want my life to look like in the next year, in the next two years. Knowing what's healthy for me, knowing what is good for me. And with social, excuse me, social media and posting, I've been thinking you know, I've been trying to post two or three reels a week. And I, I record all my reels at the beginning of the month. Usually I try to. So I have reels that are good for two months. Let's say on a Saturday or Sunday, I record reels and I have enough reels for one to two months, but they're not edited, fully edited. I just have the recorded raw videos. And so it takes time for me to edit those videos, add captions, do the right cuts at different points of the clips. And I'm starting to feel like I'm trying to always play catch up with the algorithm. And it's getting really, I'm not frustrated. I'm just like, I just feel, I don't feel very passionate about it. I'm just just feeling like, eh, here we go again. Post another reel. Now, I love my reels and I love what I put in my reels. So it's not the content itself, itself that I'm annoyed with. It's the practice and the effort behind trying to stick out on Instagram with the way the algorithm works. And it's interesting because this has been on the back, at the back of my mind for the past couple weeks, especially with all that's gone on in the last month. And then this past, or was it last week? Hannah McIntyre released a podcast episode. It's her first podcast episode of her new season. I was so excited to see it published because I've been waiting for her podcast to come back. And it was it was really leaning into the topic of taking taking a step back from trying to post so much on social media because the way the way I understood her episode was was that she was saying I'm going to par- paraphrase her. I'm tired of trying to stick out on Instagram. Let me just not put in all this crazy effort. Post when I want to rather than post because I have to post at 3 p.m. every day. Post when I want to post and the right people will be gravitating towards my content and towards me. And when I heard her say that, it just click in my head. It unlocked that back of my head where I was thinking about how I feel about social media and posting. 
So I don't know if other people listening to this podcast are feeling the same way. If you're a content creator or you're a business owner and you're kind of feeling the same way. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So if you feel the same way, if you've been feeling like whether it's social media or other parts of your life where you feel like you're putting in so much effort, but maybe that if you take your foot off the gas pedal just a little bit, that you're hoping or you're expecting that you'll get better results. Are you thinking about that? I want to hear from you. DM me or email me if this has been on your mind too. The feeling of not putting intense effort into something, but doing what you can, what your energy allows for and what brings you joy and then letting the work do the rest. How did I just say that word? The rest? The rest? I sound like Moira. Is it her name Moira from Schitt's Creek? Do the rest. (laughs) Oh, I needed that laugh in this serious episode. Taking your foot off the gas pedal, doing what brings you joy and letting the work do the rest. (laughs) Maybe rest is the keyword for today. Maybe we all need some rest. Mm, See what I did there? See what universe did there? I think my angel guides made me say that word the wrong way just so we can talk about rest. And yes, I think that's important too. Giving ourselves time to rest. And I think I've been seeking that more often now. I'm looking for more time. I'm looking to rededicate the time that I that I have towards my psychic business and Instagram and things like that while also taking the time I need to rest. Now see that I, I said not looking for more time because the thing is I have the time. I'm just not using my energy the best way. I'm not using my time the best way. And this is why I've been reassessing. What am I devoting my time to? What am I dedicating my energy to? And what can I be doing instead? But how can I do that thing instead? In a way that doesn't feel like I am oof, trying. And the thing is, I grew up being taught you have to try, try, try. Work hard. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think there's a time and place for that. But when you're working with an algorithm that is out of your control on social media, it makes it very difficult. So I think I'm going to consistently post on Instagram a certain number of times a week rather than trying to always post on Instagram at 12 p.m. most days when I can. 3 p.m. when I can't do it as early that day. I think I'm still going to have a structure to how I post, but I, I want to be consistent and also recognize that I could be trying to post every day. Maybe I could be just as successful by posting three times a week. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try. I used to do that and it didn't bring the results I wanted. And then I started posting every day. I got some nice results, but then it went back down again. It's not a bad thing to pull myself up by my bootstraps, but if the ground underneath me keeps changing, those boots aren't always going to work. Not in my favor. So maybe take a break once in a while. Maybe take a step back, sit down for a little bit rather than continuing to walk on this ground where I'm not getting anywhere. Sometimes maybe I will get somewhere if I just take a rest and assess Ooh, I like that. Take a rest and assess. <laughs> Am I coherent today? Email me. DM me. I want to hear what what what's on your mind regarding this topic. Taking a rest. Taking a step back. Not feeling like you are fighting against something that is larger than you and out of your control. How are you feeling about it? And have you been feeling this too? Email me, DM me. The last thing I want to share about, and it's really not super related to the topic of this podcast, but I think it's part of the ready, set, grow theme of this podcast. I posted an Instagram story where I mentioned that my biggest fear is death. And I've talked about this on the podcast before. And two people responded to me saying, 
your your biggest fear is death that's so interesting one person said your biggest fear of, is death wtf <laughs> and i'm not surprised to see these replies i think they're very valid responses because how can a psychic medium who talks to the other side how can they be afraid of death doesn't make any sense so i just want to quickly explain and i want to mention this as part of this this theme of growth I am a psychic medium who can talk to those on the other side and channel them in a reading. But I've never been to heaven. And I don't know what heaven is like. I don't know what it is like what it is like to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And something about that scares me. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That scares me. <laughs> okay? And I don't believe that my fear of death invalidates the work that I do. I've had a fear of death since I was a little kid. I used to have panic attacks at four years old about death. Once in a while, those panic attacks will come back. The last one I had was maybe in 2023, maybe like five to six months ago. And there's nothing I can do about it other than retrain my brain over time. And I believe that one of the many reasons... I was brought to mediumship in this physical journey I'm on is to help me cope with my fear of death. And that plus helping other people cope with their fear of death through this work, helping other people realize that their loved ones are around them through this work. So I believe, I believe there are different facets to why I've been brought to do this work in my life. And at the age of what? 2021, I was how old? I was, oh, I can't remember anymore. If I'm turning 32, I was 29, maybe 28, 29. Why was I brought to this work at the age of 29? Why? Why not at the age of 10? Why not at five? Why was I not seeing ghosts in my room at three years old? I don't know the answer to, the, to these questions. But what I do know is I've always had a fascination with death and dying. And I mean fascination as in what happens after we die. Can our loved ones, can spirits, souls come visit earth after they've passed physically? And a fascination with the paranormal, the supernatural and ghosts. There's a reason I've been fascinated with these things all my life. And there's a reason that I've had this fear of death. And I don't know why. Maybe it's a past life thing. Maybe I am meant to feel this fear in this lifetime so that through that fear, through the work that I do, I can help other people deal with deal with their fear. I don't know. But I'm on this path of curiosity and discovery. And so when I say that I have a fear of death, I feel sometimes I feel like an imposter when I share that fear. Because it doesn't seem quote unquote right for a psychic medium to be afraid of something they tap into. Right? But this is who I am. It's who I am. Period. And I just want to say to those two people who responded to my fear of death comment. I love these two people. They're really wonderful people. So I'm not criticizing them as people or criticizing their responses. I think it's a more than valid response to a psychic medium that they know saying he's afraid of death. Just want to clarify that. I love these two people. I'm here to be real. I'm here to be straight up with you all. I'm here to say that you can be afraid of death and you can also connect with your loved ones in a way that feels comfortable, in a way that feels uplifting. It's okay to feel all these things. We're human. I wish I could be that person for you that feels spirit all the time everywhere he walks that isn't afraid of death isn't afraid of anything in life that can tell you in a second that your grandmother is here and tell you all these details of when she was born how old she was when she passed what she passed from where she used to go play bingo i wish i could do all these things because it would make things feel easy for me but that's not the life i was born into and that is really not a life that will harbor or foster any growth for me. I think the fact that I have fears that may be contradictory to other people, not to me. So other people may be contradictory to what I do. I think that makes me, if I do say so myself, 
this is just my opinion about myself, makes me more interesting. Makes me more interesting. I think it adds a layer to me that even though it may confuse people, it is who I am. It's who I am. And I hope that by me sharing about my fears, me sharing about my doubts, me sharing my questions that I have, that it helps this work of mediumship feel more relatable. I don't want to be on this pedestal where you look at me as somebody who, oh, he can do that. He's gifted. And, you know, I don't mind someone calling this a gift. I do call this a gift, but I believe we all have been gifted with an ability. And this is not exclusive to just someone like me. I don't want you to see me like, like a guru. I am not a guru. I'm a human who is a medium. And the primary identity here, two, I'm a soul and I'm human. I'm human and I'm a soul. And in this lifetime right now, they both need each other. My soul needs my human to experience. And my human needs my soul to uplift, to empower myself, to empower other people. These are partners, soul and human for me. And I need to be real for both of them. I need to be authentic. And I need each of them to show up as who they are while also be willing to grow. My human needs to be willing to grow. And my soul needs to be willing to live in this human life, in, t- in this human body, to experience these things that may feel uncomfortable. So that's what I wanted to say about that. I promise <laughs> that I will try my best. I pr- I'm pretty sure I'm back to a regular programming with my podcast and with Instagram. Instagram may feel or look a bit different on my feed because it might be maybe three posts a week rather than five or four. I'm going to test things out, see how I feel. And again, I am so excited for things to come this year. This year started out a little rough, but I really do feel that this year is going to be a great year for me personally. And I hope that you feel the same way about yourself. There are a lot of things to be worried about in this world, a lot of things to be concerned about, and rightfully so. I hope that when it comes to your own life, you feel like you know what to do for yourself this year, that you know to prioritize your well-being and to cherish and love those around you that you care about and show them that love. I hope and wish that for you in 2024. I know we're in March, so this sounds like a new year podcast, but I think after all the things that have happened in the past two months in my life, I am looking ahead to this year with a lot of excitement and hope. And a lot of growth. Ready, set, grow. (laughs) Anyways, I wish you a beautiful day. Thank you for listening to my podcast, for supporting what I do. And I'll see you on the Instagram. If you have a question or topic you want me to cover on Third Eyesight, head to my website, juanfranciscospirit.com slash contact and send a message my way. If you really enjoyed this episode, leave a review wherever you listen. I'd really appreciate it.